We don't have to go many places for what we need, so it's a one-stop shop. high academic institution and we take advantage of the fact that these guys are, are sharp mentally and learn a specific way. Wheels up and back to Nashville for one more stop, touching down on the elegant campus of Vanderbilt University as we pull back the curtain on the Commodores, getting the behind the scenes view of their top notch facilities that surround Hawkins Field, learn the history of the program, plus visit with each of their coaching staff. This episode is presented by Baseball Coaches Insider, the exclusive provider of the ABCA Barnstormer Clinic video series. We can't thank them enough for their efforts in bringing this project to life, working the cameras to help us take a deeper dive into these programs and these coaches, and we hope that you go check out more of their exceptional resources at coachesinsider.com. So we're touching down at Hawkins Field in Nashville, Tennessee. Let's see if we can't get in here and get a sneak peek of what Vandy's got to offer us. Come on. Oh for one, that's okay, as baseball guys know, you keep checking gates, you'll find an open one. Keep coming. Here we go. Welcome to Hawkins Field. Very nice welcoming party. Uh, let's go see if we can't catch Tim Corbin. If I know Corbs, he's probably still in the dugout. Let's go check him out. The last gate is open. Hawkins Field, baby. This is nice. Let's catch Corbs. If there's any place we catch you, be here in the dugout. Look what the cat dragged in. <laughs> hey, Coach. Gee, how you doing? Great. How are Good you? Good to see you. Great to see you, too. Glad to be here. What a gorgeous facility, my friend. Thank you. Absolutely. Can we walk out and we talk about it a little bit? Yeah, let's do let's it. Let's head out there. Sure. Okay, so we're looking at this gorgeous facility here. I'm just interested in the history of it. Talk me through how this thing's really come together for you. Well, it was here when I was here. I mean, yeah. the general layout is the field itself mm -hmm. has been here for many years, but it was designed one year prior to me so they reconfigured it they, they kind of pushed it back because this was very tiny it was actually sitting a little bit closer to the football stadium okay but then they pushed it out they pushed the fences back and uh, memorial gymnasium here uh, I think what's unique to Vanderbilt is all three venues are tied in together That's and right. we, we use every, all the concession stands so you got football basketball and baseball but the stadium itself grew two years into it I think about 2006 um, we had seating up until 2006, seating for about a thousand, and then what they did, Sheets, is they pushed the seating beyond the dugouts on into left field and sure. right field a yep. little bit, as you can see. Yep. And then the seating beyond, that came well after. That was a 2008, 2009 project, so we got more seating in the outfield, which took the place of the bleachers, the portable bleachers that we brought in for the regionals. Right. And then we built the facility down uh, left field back in 2006. That was kind of where our locker room still is. Uh, that was where our classroom initially was mm -hmm. until the new facility went up there in left field. Yeah. Uh, field itself, we, uh, we renovated a few years ago. Back in 2013, we put turf on this field for the first time. Mac, Dan McDonald had talked me into it yeah. because I wasn't for it. <laughs> I was all about grass and dirt, sure. but also understanding of what December and January days are in Nashville and how the thaw comes up from the ground right. and makes the dirt not practicable, there's such a thing. Yeah. So uh, we went to the turf and it's probably the best thing we did. I mean, you operate more like a basketball coach in the fact that when you get out here, you can accomplish whatever you need to do. That's and right. aesthetically, it looks clean. But I would also say aesthetically inside it's clean because right. you don't bring in anything with you. I'll tell you something that's really unique about Vanderbilt Surface, and I know you did this on purpose, which you mm -hmm. kept the character of the old field and the ways that you guys would run the drag off the field, right? We did. We kept, we kept the, the dirt sections the same. Yeah. Uh, you have those lanes, I guess, going from first base on into the warning track right. uh, down the first baseline in the lane. 
uh, going off third base side down the left field line. So everything that way is the same. We tried to keep it the same in, so that if an older season ticket holder came in and looked at it, they wouldn't notice a difference. Right. They'd have, someone would have to tell them, you know, they put turf down. And I think for a lot of them, they did. We got the fungo circles. And, right. But we, uh, we, we managed the turf in the way that we wanted it and uh, the, in the way that we thought it was fair to both sides, offense and defense. And sure. Gene Stevenson at Wichita State, was uh, he stimulated that because I went to go see his field. And mm -hmm. when I came back, I basically said to AstroTurf that I just want to replicate their field and it's played well for us. Wow, now I'm noticing a couple of new things out in left field. There's mm -hmm. a big board staring at me. There's also some see-through wall. There's a new wall out there, Corbs. Mm -hmm. Talk us through that. The video board, that yeah. went up uh, about a year and a half ago and uh, we needed that just because we had an old scoreboard that mm -hmm. sat in left field. But the video board is is uh, very pleasant to the fans. It's, uh, it's good size. Um, not sure how big it is, but it's, it's big enough to where <laughs> sure. it's, it's certainly a presence and you got the Hawkins Field arch over it. Right. And then to its right, you have the wall that still exists, but the wall was just tin and aluminum before. And when we put in the new facility, what we did is we took the old batting cages and we renovated them. Right. And now what you have is essentially a three-story building that encompasses our office space and a lot of other ancillary spaces for the players and right. the team that we can now utilize. So we're kind of, uh, you got a lot of square footage inside, sure. which is, is, is nice. We don't have to go many places for what we need. So it's a one-stop shop. Wow. You know what else is in that building that I'm very intrigued and I think our, our watchers would be as well? Is that classroom? You wanna go check it out? Oh yeah, we'll see that. Let's do that. All right. Go check it out. All right. Here it is, the infamous Vanderbilt baseball classroom. This is it. Take me through how you guys utilize this space and really how important it is to what's going on here with the program. Well, we start every day here. Guys get in here at a certain time, which is usually in the afternoon. They take their seats. The seats are all assigned at the beginning of the year. So in the first meeting, when they get to their seat, they have a notebook and inside the notebook is plenty of paper and pens and highlighters. Then I, I just go right over to the podium and, and then I start. And wow. you know, from that point right there, that's really how our day starts. It starts in here and then it flows to on the field. Sure, and we're spending some time in this classroom with your guys, you're breaking down practice, you're breaking down the fundamentals inside how you're gonna play, right, from a baseball perspective? Yeah, it's a progression. That first meeting, there's probably not a whole lot of conversation about baseball. Right. It's more about how the program's gonna function, how the organization's gonna function, how we wanna function inside of it. As the weeks progress, there becomes more baseball being taught in here, but the baseball part of it really doesn't get going until maybe the third or fourth week. Wow. And we're moving well past baseball in a lot of these teachings in this room. I'm, I'm thinking that we're getting into life skills, we're getting into character building, right? Yeah, uh, individual growth first and then, then team development, but there is a, you know, there's an outcome to, to them leaving school, and uh, I think this environment right here goes hand in hand with Vanderbilt. And, I mean, it's oh, not wow. for everyone, but just for, for Vanderbilt, I mean, we're a, a mm -hmm. high academic institution, and we take advantage of the fact that these guys are, are sharp mentally yeah. and learn a specific way, and because they learn in this way, it, uh, it just, it, it makes sense. But, this, for me personally, goes back many years. I mean, we, we, sure. we did this ever since we've started here at Vanderbilt, but now this is a, a fully functioning classroom space. That's great. I'm glad I got to see it firsthand. This has been fantastic. Thanks for opening your doors to this. Um, I'm gonna go try to find Coach Baxter, check out the hitting cages, okay. but I'll catch you back down on the field. You got it. All right, thanks, thanks Corpse. appreciate yep. it. So they're telling me there's some cages around here somewhere. Let's go downstairs and see if we can find them. Come on. How are you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you too. You doing okay? Yeah, I'm doing great, man. Awesome. Thanks for having us here, man. Yeah, thank you for coming. Excited to be here. here. No doubt. 
Um, now, again, you played here. Did you have something like this when you played here? No, we just had a, uh, we had one cage underneath the football stadium <laughs> where the pitching lab is now. So I've seen a lot of renovations here, but this is a lot nicer than what we had back then. What, what was kind of the mission? Again, great setup, phenomenal setup. Three long tunnels, got one here as well. Now, what was the idea behind the setup here? Functionality, yeah. you know, for a larger group. You just wanted a place where the guys could come in and feel at home, yeah. and uh, it's all wired for sound, and, and he wanted them to be able to come down here and, and spend time comfortably and gotcha. feel like they could get better. When you get an opportunity with your team to do uh, your offenses all in here, how would you set things up? How would you structure a practice session inside here with all your hitters? How would you go about that? If we have everybody down here mm -hmm. at one time, uh, then generally we'll use all four cages. Um, I like to get on the machines a lot, so we okay. have the, the home plate machine there, which is one of my favorites, and then the spin ball, we just got two of those this year, and nice. excellent. one of my favorite machines down here to recreate pitches. So we'll usually have two machine segments going, uh, we'll, have, we'll have one of the, one of the coaches throwing BP, and then in, in this cage, we usually focus on skill work in here, so we'll keep this junior hack attack out. Uh, we like to get the guys in here to get their punts down and, and get really focused on that. Sure. Oh. We try to use the machines to get a, as game-like reps as we can, and we also want the guys to get their normal reps and just feel good. So we'll get some BP for them too. That's outstanding. You know, a really cool dynamic, we're just walking through here, it's hard to miss that there is a large left field wall right above our shoulders here. Can you talk about this dynamic here? Yeah, the great touch. And I think as you go through the whole facility, like I was talking about, you see attention to detail, yeah. you see an ode to the past, the guys that created the program. I think that was yeah. a big part of the planning process. Um, and there's a lot of dents on that wall, and every dent has a story. <laughs> That's right, no right? doubt. So yeah. a lot of good hitters put dents in that wall, and uh, it's really cool to see that Coach Corbin uh, kind of reclaimed it and, and put it down in this space. And I think it adds a, a really nice element to the space down here. Absolutely. Well, it brings it home, help your players remind that we're making upgrades out there. Let's never forget where we came from. Exactly. I think that's an awesome element as yeah. well. All right, well, Mike, well, thanks for showing us your space. We appreciate the hospitality, man. Thanks, thanks for coming. Good seeing you, buddy. My pleasure. Let's see what else I can get in. All right, cool. We're just going to keep opening doors until we find the legendary Vanderbilt Pitching Lab. Let's try out here. Makes sense. Let's try P for pitching. Let's give that a shot. Coach Brown. Hey, Sheets. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Great. How are you doing? Man, great to see you. Good to see you as well. Uh, awesome lab here, man. I this mean, is great. Pretty luxury, luxury to have this. I mean, it's incredible here. Just the space down here below the football stadium. That's outstanding. You mind showing us around a little let's, bit? Let's take let's you around. It. Let's do it. So this is my first time down in this pitching lab. And this is such a neat dynamic because you hear about the Vanderbilt pitching lab. Can you take us back to the history of this thing coming to fruition? This is Coach Derek Johnson's baby. Uh, I believe back in 2005, six in that range, I'm not 100% sure on it. This used to be the batting cages for, for wow. the team when, when Coach Corbin first got here. And when they built that new building upstairs, which is existing on the left field line right now, that was kind yeah. of that first building that we had. Coach Johnson had a vision and built this into a you know pitching lab. Uh, we, if you look quickly behind us, we've added a sure. couple plow walls. Uh, you know, we like to throw the plow walls and do stuff like that. So yeah. we've, we've added those here in the last couple years. We've also added like a turf dry area mound that we call it uh, that was built uh, where we can do some different dry work setups. That's yep. that like synthetic dirt that, uh, you know, doesn't really require any water and sure. is tamped up and, um, you know, the catching area and stuff. The ace wall, that I think was Coach Johnson's really like his thing. That <laughs> He had built this concrete wall for the med balls and probably some arm care stuff. Now, here's what's really cool. Again, being at a, in an SEC, a Power 5 school, you have the capability to really make this area what you want. And part of that has been your adaptation to technology. Can you talk through some of the technologies that you've kind of brought into this? We have the Rap Soto. You know, we have a radar gun with a radar gun display. Yep. Um, we're fortunate enough to have the Edutronic camera, which shoots a thousand frames per sure. second. So we do a lot of different stuff with that as far as pitch design, pitch development. Um, the cameras uh, with the video coordinator, he just sets them up wherever I ask him to. So he's, I mean, it's really cool. It. Okay, so I'm looking at this area, man. And again, you're going to have, let's say, 17, 18 pitchers on your staff this year. Mm -hmm. Okay, now if we had to come down here as a pitching staff, how would you coordinate an effort in here to keep these guys moving and shaking? Well, first thing we, we, you notice when you come down here is guys get right to their soft tissue stuff. Yeah. After that, then they kind of evolve into what's theirs, their band work, um, if they're throwing plow balls. Um, the music, if you look at that little boom box, that <laughs> thing will be bumping. Like, that's the big thing we try to do every day is the environment. If it's a recovery day, then you know Mozart might be playing and it's a little bit less and we're trying to 
you know, just get through our range of motion and stuff like that. But if we're turning it up, we're that thing's going to be bumping. And the rule is, wow. first first man down here put, puts his music. Whatever on, he so wants. Whatever he wants. We all live with it. So <laughs> if you don't like it, get here earlier. That's it. So. What would a young Scott Brown have done with Mozart? I don't know if I would even know what that is, actually, to tell you the truth. <laughs> I just, uh, yeah, it's a good question. <laughs> we ask the tough questions here at ABCA. <laughs> um, when you're looking at this area, let's say you do have a, a system within your practice schedule. How many guys might be down here at a time? In terms, especially if we're doing bullpens, how would they be kind of coordinating your time? There might be uh, six to eight guys down here with okay. him or the strength coach or the trainer. We just try to find time for them to get their arm carry in if they're not doing skill work with me. Sure. So, um, and if they're not down here, they're usually up in the weight room too. They, so we wow. kind of split it up. Uh, coach has been really great with me as far as just not, you know, having pitchers stand out there. Yeah, we just don't do that. We try to really yep. be efficient with our time on those guys and stuff, so it helps. The way you just described it, it is a lab. We're down it is. working. It is, and it's, you know, sometimes it's, uh, I guess you could think of it as, you know, people look at it as like a technology lab, but it's not really. I think the pure fundamental and foundation of it is just kind of a dungeony, you know, I don't know, Spartan-like. Got it. So, Brownie, thanks for showing us around the pitching lab a little bit. We're going to keep roaming these hallways, see what else we can't get into. Oh, it's great to have you here. Thank you. Thanks, man. This is it. We're here. Hammer, hey, what's going on, my man? Great to see you. Yeah, you doing all right? Yeah, doing great. Thanks for having us. No problem. Really appreciate it. Glad Get a chance to check out this big time weight room, man. So I've been dying to check this out and talk this through with you because I know you had a hand in designing this whole place. Can you take us through that? Absolutely. So when they redid the whole facility, which you've been through today, yeah. we got we were blessed to get gain some more space through here. So we gained some more on the office side of the building. We gained some more going that way too. Sure. So we know it's not the most vast space in the building, but we tried to be as efficient as we could with what we have here too. And that's, uh, that leads me to like the design of this place. Every rack correlates with the power block. Every rack has a set of bands, every, everything. Sure. You should be able to complete a workout within a rack. So wow. I'm not having to go from one end of the weight room to the other just to get a set of dumbbells because what you see on these power blocks right here yep. is everything that you see on that back wall. So I'll have three to four guys to a rack. That way I can keep them in one space and keep it managed and everything yeah. like that. So. so that has real functionality to what you... Correct. Yeah. Correct. With this and the space we have, I try to keep it... I try to keep it in two groups, hitters and pitchers. Gotcha. But for me, it's easier to keep an eye on both groups and sure. I handle them differently and accordingly based on position and sure. what they do and, and things like that. So that'll help me that'll help me keep things manageable mm -hmm. um, and help me use some of this new, new equipment that we got. Well, let's open this up because these are different than the racks and we had when we were playing right. and I'm looking at them going, I'm not sure what we're measuring and talking about and tracking. So can you, can you open that up? Well, just like you probably talked to Brownie about all the technology that he has and stuff sure. like that. Well, we're doing the exact same thing here. So love it. Anything that we can track and help the development of our guys and help them get a visual of what they're doing. Sure. That's exactly what we're doing up here. So yep. we measure fastballs, we measure exit velocities, launch angles, like you name it. Like we track it. Well, we can do the same thing in the weight room too. So the elite form up here on our rack. Yep will help me set parameters on the workout. So it's not it's not the old school whiteboard workout. Anymore. Exactly. Yeah, our, yeah. Guy, our guys will come in, they'll sign in, their workout will be up there. And within that workout, I'll have certain parameters on that. If I need to work on it, it's a power day or it's a velocity based day, yep. I can set parameters within that program. The guys will get immediate feedback. So if they hit the numbers that I give them, that screen is gonna stay green. Well, if they don't hit that number, it stays, it goes red. So it's wow. immediate feedback. They either gotta change the weight, they gotta change their intent, or, or we need to we need to look, look at some kind of form sure. when it comes to that. So you mentioned trying to vary in your groups, having hitters at one time, offensive guys, and really dealing with the pitch and staff separately. Let's say one of those groups was in here. How would you maybe set up a particular lift for those guys? Pitchers in particular, I, I put them in buckets. Like I'll okay. base that off assessments on previous injury, where they're at during the course of the season, what their role is, sure. things of that nature, where they're at in development wise, how many years they've been here and things of that nature. So I'll sit down with those guys and, and based off that assessment, I, I, I got those guys in racks. Yeah. So guys that have similarities and things like that that need to work on, I got a different program over here. So if you come up here, it looks like madness, but I promise it's organized. Yes. Like there's, there's seven different programs going on at once. Like wow. there's, 
three or four guys doing certain things. It looks like madness, but I, I, I promise it's organized. Sure, that is cool. This is impressive, man, and again, it's got a lot of cool features to it. I think the neatest part is, is exactly what you need. Yeah. It's, not, it's not any more, it's not any, it's not any bigger than what you need, it's exactly what you guys need for your team. It's functional, it's efficient. I mean, we go right out these doors, I can get on the turf field, we can do our running out there. Wow, and this obviously plays a huge role in success that shows up on the diamond. And this is, it's, it's nice for these kids too. They come in here, wow. they check in, we do some assessments, they get their work in, they go to practice, and it's, uh, it's a great way for them to start the day. Off and rolling. Thanks for the hospitality. Thanks for letting us check this out. We got more things to go check out. Perfect, man. Thanks, Coach. Anytime. Appreciate it. <laughs> what I tell you, another open gate. Come on. Brooks, what's up, buddy? What's up, man? Great wow. to see you. Great Thanks to see you. By. Thanks, yeah. man. Thanks for having us. Of course. Wow, what an impressive space. Take me through all this. Yeah, so this is our player lounge. Uh, the guys moved in here last January, so it's part of our renovation that we okay. did uh, last year with the player development facility. So mm -hmm. this is the existing locker room and lounge space from before. So where we're standing was actually the staff locker room, and you had the pro locker room uh, behind that wall there. Okay. And a big emphasis, we want to create a bigger space for the players. A place sure. that was their home, something they could hang out in. I yeah. think we achieved that objective. Got Obviously, plenty of space for the whole team. It was about 25% the size of this before. And wow. You'd find the whole team kind of crammed up in there and, and guys sitting on top of sure. each other. So they have a little bit more space. I think they've got plenty of big enough screen. That you they get some can, stuff uh, done up they here. They get a few things on there. So yeah. they can go four games at once or one one uh, one big TV as well. And wow. I'm sure it wouldn't surprise you, but some pretty crazy games of Fortnite to get thrown I up on that I could see that. Too. That's so, great. Yeah, it's a great space for them. They love it. I mean, it's one of those things where there's very few times in the year where you pass through and there's not a couple guys in here hanging out with their eating or just sure. you know, whether it's before training or after training, but it's a space they definitely love. Love it. Wow, this is impressive. Okay, take me through all this. Take me through this whole room. Yeah, you know, there were a few things that were, I would say, our main objectives when we redid the space. The, the shape of it didn't change a whole lot, but we wanted right. to have a very professional, clean look to it. I think that um, you know, I think that that was that was probably the biggest point of emphasis. Obviously, we added the ceiling graphic and sure. some different lighting options, which the guys yeah. like quite a bit. Um, but just the ability to put in a few more lockers when we gain the space with the lounge and enable us to do a few different things. We want it to be a nice open space, new lockers for the guys, and enable them to have some different drawers and storage options, a place yeah. to place their travel bags and those type of things. Those were important to us, but. Yeah. You know, everything we do here, I think when it comes down to facilities, you want it to be a place the players are proud of, that they that's want right. to spend time at, that they're not just coming down here to change and head up to the field and head home. Right. And I think that's what, you know, the locker room and the lounge, when you, when you set out to do a project like that, I think that's what you want, is for the guys to never want to leave. And that's certainly what we've got here. Okay, this has been fantastic. Do you got some time to take us around the player development facility a little bit? I'd love to. Let's go check it out. Let's do it. Okay, talk us through all this. So this is our MLB hallway, and to get up on this wall, you have to either have been drafted in the first round or have made an appearance in the big leagues. So wow. Kyle Wright was our last guy that yeah. was able to do both of those, but you'll see some familiar faces up there. Obviously got Dansby from when he went 1-1 with the Diamondbacks, Carson Fulmer, Dodger star Walker yeah. Bueller, and got you know Jeremy Sowers. He was the first one made at the big leagues with the Indians. He was on the 2004 regional team right. uh, in Corb's second season. And obviously, World Series champion uh, David Price yeah. so from his time 10 years ago when he punched the Rays ticket to get to the World Series right. against the Red Sox and then winning a World Series with the Red Sox is a pretty, wow. pretty neat thing for him, obviously. But pretty impressive wall and a great way to, to honor these guys. Sure. So you got the All American wall uh, here. First team All Americans in the gold bats, second and third team on the wall. Okay. Just got some, uh, some program facts back here. So this wall used to be. In the old team classroom, when that got moved into this building, we put this in the hallway just so it's sure. more of a centerpiece for guests and donors and recruits to be able to take a look at when they when they tour the facility. Wow! Now this area hits home for you, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. We had to have a had to have a Team USA wall, so USA baseball is certainly near and dear to my heart. But a a really cool thing to be able to celebrate our guys who've worn the red, white, and blue that 
played for the collegiate national team. Coach Corbin, two-time alumni, the coach for the collegiate national team. He led that 2006 team to a gold medal uh, that actually had Price, Alvarez, and I believe Casey Weathers were all on that uh, all on that club. So Patrick Gravy was our last guy. He's a senior for us right now. He pitched on college team in uh, 2017, and obviously hope to have uh, hope to have more Vandy boys in the future on that wall. Man, this has been off the charts. Appreciate the hospitality, of course, bro. Man. Anytime. You're always welcome here. Thank you, sir. I think I got a little something for Coach Corbin down on the Okay. Deal. I'm going to take off. All right. Enjoy Thanks, it. Yeah, appreciate see it. it. So the betterment of my development is going to increase the development of the, the players that you're teaching. Wow. And if I don't move myself, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to move them in the direction to grow them.